Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today's video is about how to use pine to get better success with your woodworking projects. Uh, and I am going to build a little table, but we're going to skip a lot of parts on it because I want to concentrate on how you can best use pine to your advantage. So let's get started. A lot of new woodworkers start off using pine and the reason is it's a relatively inexpensive wood compared to many others. It's readily available almost anywhere. It's a fairly soft wood, it's light, it's easy to work with. Depending on where you shop you may be able to get different thicknesses. It comes in glued up panels sometimes. You can buy it as single board so there's lots of different ways you can buy it. But it has one disadvantage. It's very soft and because of that it doesn't always stand up to the rigors of day-to-day -day usage. But today I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do to overcome that. Okay, let's get started on some fun stuff uh, and start making this build working with pine. So I'm pre-cutting everything to save us some time because we're focusing on the actual wood. And right here I have the legs. I'm going to put those together in a moment. Here I have the apron and here I have the lower brackets. I'm not going to use anything here right now. We're going to concentrate on the legs right now. So I'm about to start gluing up the legs and in a perfect world we'd be able to get wood that was the exact width that we need but sometimes we need to make it. And so I'm going to be using these thin strips and gluing them together but when you do that you really want to try and match the wood as best you can. Now to stop these from sliding around, I'm going to put on a couple of um, these clamps and that's going to stop them from sliding around and I'm going to do the next glue up here and then I'm going to clamp them all together. Now I don't have enough clamps to do individuals so I'm going to be clamping them in sets of two. So this will be one set and then I'll do another set off camera. So there's all the gluing and clamping and that wood is good and stable. And I should mention the other reason that we do, sometimes when we don't get the right wood we have to glue it, but there's another reason for doing gluing and it's something you should always keep in mind and that is that laminated wood, that is two boards that are glued together, are much stronger than a single board of the same thickness. So that's another really good reason why you might want to do some glue up. So, okay, I'm just taking the clamps off. Now it's about two hours later, and I'm taking all of the clamps off both of the legs that I've glued up. Now, the reason I'm taking these clamps off is because I want to take a moment to scrape this glue off before it gets really super hard on there. Well, now that we have all of our components, the next thing we need to determine is how are we going to join everything together? And that's why we're talking about joinery. Now, there's basically three options um, or common options for joining things like this together. And the, the most common uh, and the most used is probably the mortise and tannin. Uh, but you could also use pocket holes and we could also use dowels. And the question is, what's best for pine? So the best way to find out what's the strongest joint is to actually test some joinery on pine wood. So today I'm going to have a look, I'm going to compare the uh, pocket hole system and I'm going to compare it with the dowel system. Now I'm not going to use mortise and tenon today because all of the testing that I've done I've discovered that the dowel system is equal or stronger than mortise and tenon so there's no point doing two of them that are almost equal or, or basically equal. Um, the other thing I've discovered is that you can test till you're blue in the face with this stuff. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do what I believe a normal person would be doing. If you were putting together a little table like this, what would most people probably do? And some people would have a little bit different take on it, but it's just a testing thing anyway. So let's have a look and see what this looks like. 
and where the needle stops going up is where it will fail. There, it's failed there at, uh, oh, what is that, 200, about 250 pounds. And you can see that it's just sliding down. The screws are sliding out of the main. It's cracked the side here. See how it's cracking the side? Now I expect in this one it's going to pull the dowels out. I don't think it's going to snap. There it's failed at uh, 400 and about 450. Oh, it's going, yeah, it's about 450 pounds. And you can see the wood is cracking. Actually, the wood is failing before the dowels are failing. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that use biscuits, so just for fun, I I decided to make one with biscuits, uh, but the biscuits continue <laughs> to disappoint me. We'll see if they'll change now. So there's 200, well, uh, about, looks like about maybe 275 it might have got to. And there's, and it again, it pulled out of the wood. The wood failed. In this case, the, the wood failed before the biscuits. Usually the biscuits will fail, uh, but it looks like the, the wood failed. Okay, I've come to that point in the build where I need to start working on the joiner. We've already established that we're going to do, uh, if you don't have a doweling machine or something similar, uh, we'll be doing uh, mortise and tannin. Now I'm going to be using my doweling machine uh, and one of the advantages of the doweling machine because you're adding dowels to each side is when you measure from side to side, the, the wood that you're going to be putting in there, it's going to be the base and this will be the top. Um, you don't have to worry about adding a little piece of wood. So you don't, when you measure your wood, you measure exactly for what it is because the dowels go in there. Uh, so that's really nice and you can, means you can get nice straight flat corners and that's really what sold me on this machine. Now I'm not going to show you the drilling of all the holes. Uh, I'll just do this one set and then I'll drill all the holes off camera. Now I've drilled all the holes in my legs. The next thing I need to do is drill some holes for the dowels in my apron and my rails. And never ever be afraid to mark your wood so that you don't get mixed up. I always use blue tape on the face of all my boards. In this case I'm using a T for the top as well. So I'm going to go like that so that you can see that. And now for this one I'm going to take out that little spacer in there because I've already spaced one. You don't space two of them, you only space one. Um, and now this will go on like that. Now I align my face. This is always the face of my doweling jig to the top of the board and tighten that down. And that will be where I will drill the matching holes. Okay, there's that little table all together. It looks very good. Uh, all the joints are nice, are going to be nice and tight. Of course, it's loose now because the dowels that I use are loose. I've had to sand them down, otherwise they're too hard to get in and out. It's such a nice tight fit. Um, I didn't time myself for drilling all the holes. I think it maybe took me 15 minutes to drill all of the holes for this entire um, carcass of this little table. The next thing I'm going to do is finishing. I'm not going to make you sit through it. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and why. So let's get on with that. The next thing we need to talk about is the finish that we're going to use. And typically, a lot of people complain that pine gives you blemishes, and it does, depending on the product that you use. I always try and 
um, do all of the finishing before I do the final assembly. And that way you are able to get all the little nooks and crannies uh, so you can get a much better job and a much more thorough job. So I'm going to be doing that. Um, there's, and there's a few things. Back in the day when I used to use stain, and stains are typically oil-based, um, the best way to finish pine was to use something called a pre-stain or a conditioner and that would get in most cases that got rid of the blotchiness then I would put on a, a stain and then I would put on a varnish um, I abandoned this system over 20 years ago uh, what I use now what I've been using for a long time for those of you who've been following my channel you'll know that I use dyes now and I'm going to put a video of that little thing that just popped up right there uh, on the screen that's a link to a video that I made where a video called dyes versus stains and it's a good idea to have a quick look at that these are water soluble they come as powders or concentrates um, and they coat you don't need to pre-stain with these these coat pine just fine I've never had a problem with it you can see there's some mixed up right there uh, and it's a very watery it dries in a half an hour or so you can actually start stain or start um, finishing now this is a var varathanes and varnishes lay on top of the surface um, about 20 years ago I switched to this product it's called Osmo this is called a hardening oil and if you're watching any of the other woodworking shows on YouTube you notice a few guys using something a product called I think it's called Rubio I have not tried that product yet um, but I understand they love it because it's a hardening oil guess what that's a hardening oil I've been using that product for 20 years so I know exactly the finishes that they're getting with it and why they're so in love with it because hardening oils are a great way to go so I'm going to go ahead and take this apart sand it down put on a dye of my, the color of my choice and one coat of this because I'll do a second coat after it's assembled so I'll do one coat of this too and when we come back uh, you'll see where I've got to okay this is the top I thought I'd take a quick minute and um, we'll go through this quickly uh, just to show you what a dye looks like when it goes on it basically paints on it's very watery and it just paints on like a um, any any kind of a paint or something it just very very light I'm going to give you a very quick um, overview on applying this uh, Osmo product uh, and basically you use these uh, white pads you buy these at the automotive store they're used for um, body shops use them uh, but basically all you do is just put on a very thin layer and you let that uh, lay down on your product on your uh, project that you're working on and just let it soak in for a few minutes um, the main thing with any of these hardening oils and basically they're oils that harden overnight um, is that put it on very very thinly uh, and I generally put on two sometimes three coats uh, and pine is very porous wood that's why it's so light and sometimes when I finished with it uh, I see that it needs a third coat so well now comes that time of the project build the best time at all when you get to put everything together and I'm not going to make you sit through the uh, construction um, but when it's all done it's going to be complete so when it all comes together that's the finished product now basically what I'm going to be doing uh, just to give you a bit of a heads up first of all I'm going to be inserting dowels in all of the holes that I've drilled um, and I'll put I'll do all of the pieces first of all so I'll insert all of the dowels and all of the pieces then I will take the individuals that have the dowels already in them and put them that way and put them together uh, once the all the, the dowels are inserted that way so that's the way I'm going to put it together uh, I might show you a quick a quick clip and I'll speed that up uh, but basically the, the uh, construction here pretty simple uh, it's just a matter of putting it all together now
The one thing I will mention about dowels, or if you're using mortise and tenons, always err on the side of larger when you're working with pine because you need more wood surface to wood surface because that gives you more glue surface to glue. Well, that concludes our video today, working with pine. And of course, pine being such a soft wood, uh, the real key is making sure that you have bigger gluing surfaces. So longer mortise, longer tenons, deeper mortises, uh, longer dowels, for example. All of those things are going to give you bigger, longer gluing surfaces. And that's really the key to uh, working with pine is bigger surfaces that you can mate your pieces to and that will make a strong project for you uh, and one that'll last a lifetime. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.